is all about technology and how humanity see the future of technology maybe 40 to 50 years What is technology? Meron concept na meaning na nagsasabi na technology is all about the idea sprouted on a simple quest of solving simple problem. So technology is innate in our evolutionary history wherein yung pinakaunang species ng tao sumubok na mag-imbento ng technology in a form of using it as a tool to survive. Simple meaning is that if you have given this kind of body, this kind of genes, it is already considered as a primary tool survival. So, once and for all, we have given the brain. Pinigyan tayo ng parents natin ng otak. Pinigyan tayo ng parents natin ng human structure wherein we can behave as a human being that capable of doing things, doing something to survive in this world. Technology is not just the modern external, the modern smartphone we are seeing in this 21st century. What I am actually talking about is that technology is everything. It is a matter. Everything can be a tool. Tool is synonymously used as the short term for technology. So a matter is technology. Atom electrons, neutrons, they are a form of technology wherein once they can be harnessed, they can create significant impact or influence around its surroundings. Take for example the nuclear bomb. It is a form of atom, it is a form of matter bind together. And using Einstein's equation E is equals to mc squared, energy is equals to mass times the speed of light. Einstein had unleashed the power of an atom. It creates the technology of the 20th century. In short, everyone in this world, including animal, including the fish, including what we see outside, species of a dinosaur, species of a bird, they use technology to leverage their survival. For example, the eagle, they have this clock, the sharp clock. So it was refined by evolution, the purpose of hunting, the purpose of gathering the food, and the purpose of killing the enemy using the innate evolutionary genes. Back in the ancient world wherein fishes are only a small creature, then over time creates a diversified species which includes the shark that their teeth had evolved in their world. So in short, yung pag nakita ka ng pating, pating na may matatalas na mga ipin, halos lahat ng pating matatalas ay ipin, they are actually refined by evolution. They use this kind of sharp teeth as their primary tool to survive. So may level yung, yung animal king them a species that had a much above way of surviving they become the predator then the prey below are stable ang kaya lang gawin ng mga prey is to hide and survive what our earliest species had undergone is that they had evolved their primary technology in a form of brain expansion yung utak natin ang pinaka complex ng technology na nirefine nung sinaunang tao story of evolution and how Charles Darwin is the earliest human. So it is actually a fact that we are primates. We are small primates back on those days that we used to climb on trees. We hide as our defense mechanism. That's the only technology we have back before. Imagine 100,000 years had Past, then another species was born. This is uh, Homo sapiens, wherein their primary tool was to invent things, creating how they can use matter in their surrounding to survive. You've been living on the time of the earliest species of Homo sapiens. They are actually using stone technology as their primary tool of hunting. Spears, sharp spears, knife. That's how they use their talent to create such tool. Fast forward tayo sa future, 300,000 to 400,000 years. During the time of Jesus Christ or the ancient Egyptians wherein humans became so very skilled on doing something. 
they are born onto it. They are born on creating idea. They are born on surviving this world. Yung defense mechanism na kung saan tayo nagmula, nag-evolve yun na form of brain expansion. Naging mas madali na tayo, mas, mas naging ma-otak tayo. Although we are very vulnerable in predatory attack, we are capable of this kind of defense mechanism wherein we are very anxious about our surroundings. We are very highly skilled, highly alert on something. Our brain will rush onto its powerful force after recognizing that we are almost on the verge of dying. Explaining the future of technology is not enough unless we explain the past, unless we explain how the earliest technology was made by human from stone to knife. This is just saying the medieval period, humanity started to clash, humanity started to harness the greedy individuals. We are born selfish, we need expansion, we need to challenge everyone, we need to compete during those times. That's why countries exist, religion exists, every diversified species come together, come with the same idea to challenge one another. During those times, the medieval period was so bloody. Doon mo makikita kung saan yung isang grupo ng tao and another group of tao nagkukumpit sila, magpapatayan sila then what they had used they had used technology to leverage their capacity, their power among another so dito palang makikita mo paano nag-evolve yung technology you know, in war, so, makikita mo paano yung yung spot nagsimula lang sa kuchilyo then enemy had invented such things such as arrows wherein pagdating sa distansya mas nakakatipid ng tao so tinapatan na naman ito ng after another century and plus tinapatan siya ng catapult wherein they use so technology of leveraging to combat another then after such time dumating yung gunpowder nung naimbento yung gunpowder walang, walang nagkaakala na magiging revolutionary ito. So, ito naman sumunod yung pag-invento ng earliest pistol and shotgun until such time, naging diversified na yung weaponry in war. So, imagine it took only 600 years and humanity had created such kind of complex weapon in their hand. Ngayon, mabibili mo na lang sa mga tindahan yung mga ganong weaponry. We have this government, we have this policy that life is important. You cannot took away another life just for the sake of something misunderstanding that happened from both parties. Unless when you live during those barbaric period where life are easy, when only harness such technology then automatically kill another person. Balik tayo dun sa pinakapunto natin. What I mean is technology is not only for humans, but it is applied to everything, including animals. So, na-explain ko dun paano naging technology ang isang hayop. Another example is not the cheetah. So, they had this kind of running mechanism. They are the fastest mammalian animal. Then, the second one is that they hunt these antelopes. So, mas lamang yung cheetah sa speed. Kumbaga, ang cheetah tumatakbo ng mga 90 miles per hour. So, just example lang yung number. Ha. Then, this antelope runs 87 miles per hour. Nagkatalo pa rin sila dun sa minimal point na kung saan. Dun babangga yung mas nakakalamang ang mga cheetah as primary predator. So, it was refined by evolution. That's how things work. If your technology are weak, if your genetic structure are weak, if you are weak in this world, then all of the sudden, you would, wouldn't expect that you can be easily betrayed by those competition around you. My cheetah had evolved into such kind of mechanism because he's mostly in a co-competition mundo in order to be one of those elites that had used technology for the good of their species. What is the core of this topic? The core of this topic is to explain the future of technology. Take for example the cheetah. They run fast. They outpace the speed of the antelope. So would you think in the next 200 years they will still be on the top of the food chain? That's the question. They develop this kind of technology of speed 
which runs 19 miles per hour then this another antelope runs 88 miles per hour so what if in the near future what would happen to those genetic structure what if this antelope develop another form of survival to outpace this cheetah what if they develop this running mechanism that they can run further and further they develop this kind of capacity to run long distance with uh, exhaustion what would happen to the species of cheetahs they might extinct if that happens so if titignan mo yung reality ng technology in animal kingdom wala naman siguro pagbabago kasi if sila tataas there should be another that will fall then another species will rise so what I meant is that the future technology includes evolution. It is very crucial to understand that evolution is real and made significant impact not just on human but also how it changed the entire world. What I'm making an example is that the smartphones, the smartphones you are using now, you are watching this video, then what you are looking at your screen are these modern smartphones that doesn't exist during the time of Jesus Christ, during the time of Buddha, during the time of ancient Egyptians. There's no such thing as smartphones back then. If you have been living during the time of 18th to 19th century during the time of the early human, walang sinong taong mag-iisip na magkakaroon sila ng ganitong complex na material smartphone where they can share their world online into another dimension. There's no such thing. If this was Earth, this was America, this was Philippines, no one had imagined that they would be in contact in just a few seconds. And communication was crucial. During the time of Jose Rizal, they still use lettering, they still use these birds, yeah, they email their, their letter, then it would took the message probably three months, three to four months until the boat arrived. Then no one back then had imagined that the technology will be so fast. So simple devices such as computer, printers, smartphones, this was actually used in order to make our community capable of doing something which no longer need to waste most of their energy. Gusto niyo, gusto ng tao is mapadali yung proseso, mapadali yung buhay. Oras kasi natin masyadong limitado. That's how we view technology in the 21st century. How we use it to maximize our time while making technology to work for something that we want to accomplish work for something that we humans no longer need to do. It's the purpose of our technology in this generation. It took only 20 years when the first phone was released, the first 3210, the first 3310 was released during the 2001. I was kinder back then. I was only grade 1 when I heard that there are new phones in the market. It was only elementary when the first Google was being seen by the world. I never heard the internet before because it was expensive back then during the year 2002-2003. We had only a personal computer used for gaming, used for Microsoft Office, but I heard already the internet, but it never took that much to become a viral thing after 20 years. Imagine it only took 20 years. The first cell phone became smartphone. Ngayon, kung titignan mo, wala, wala ka nang may kitang tao na gustong mag-anggin ng 3210, 3310. Although, sila yung mga first class na matitibay ng phone. They become so obsolete that even the poorest people so disappointed when using those kind of earliest version. One can imagine already during those times that like for example Steve Jobs that the modern phones will become touch screen. So what would be the, the goal of this topic? The goal of this topic is we reach the point that smartphones become touch screen. They become wireless. They have this 8 to 12 gigabytes of RAM. Their capacity of storage was so unimaginable that you can store anything including movies, several videos. So the question is what would be the next evolutionary point of smartphones?
what would be their next in line rank 10 to 20 years ahead in the future. So by the time I, I will become 46 years old, I could imagine that smartphones will diversify. They will still be evolving in the future. They become this complex material there that human no longer need to work. What I'm talking about is that what if smartphones become the modern robotics? Paano pag yung mga smartphone, eh, ito sila yung mga next in line rank na magiging robot na yung partner ng tao. Ngayon sa panahon natin na napapansin natin, Google, isang type mo lang, isang search mo lang, bibigyan niya yung sagot sa'yo automatically. Then, 10 to 20 years ahead in the future, parang meron na tayong personal assistant. Well, they become the second image of us. They become our second reflection. The technology become our powerful tool to make a living in this world. We are not anymore doing the jobs we hate. We are more exposed on our leisure time. We are exposed on spending time on our family, spending time to expand our business, to expand our idea. That's how the future humans would do. When I had watched the first Iron Man movie film, I already knew that this will become the future of smartphones. The, the simple kind, the simple job is where siya na yung bahala na magsasagot ng tawag, magsasagot ng message. Siya na rin bahala mag-automate kung anong sasabihin niya dun sa tao kung tinatamad ka mismo. Kung anong gustong tanong mo, yung Jarvis na yung sasagot sa'yo, yung simple AI na yung sasagot sa'yo. Then, 2030, sabihin natin, they become so available in the market already. Uh, the future of smartphones such as AI or robotics become so cheap in the market already that one can buy it online then use it in order to make something, make a project, make a hobby. Dadating tayo sa point na kung saan mapipace out na yung mga cellphone, mapipace out na yung mga smartphone natin, then all of us have them. Yung mga robot na minamarket in the near future, pwede mo nang bilhin equivalent of the actual price of smartphone ahead of inflation. So let's say you can buy one robot an amount of 80,000 then this kind of robot would, would perform simple Google, Google task, simple mapping, simple travel guide, message call, imitation, lahat gagawin ng simple na robot na ito. So, maaaring hologram. It is a hologram type of machine of technology wherein nakastore lang siya sa palad natin. Then, when you click it, you can see your robot, your hologram robot in your hands to perform task. You can print it. Meron na tayong 3D printer na kung saan it will evolve 20 years in the future. What I'm trying to say is that the hologram you created, when you try to command this hologram to perform tasks in an actual physical reality, you can print this kind of hologram automatically. Also on your right hand, this will be serve as your printer. What you only need are tools to create this kind of machine. Then after printing this kind of robot hologram, they can then perform task that you wanted to achieve. Dating tayo sa point na kung saan yung trabaho natin, yung mga robot na yung gagawa. Such as simple programming, tweak lang ng software ng robot na ito. Then they could function to work on a managerial position. They could work on your office. You buy that kind of robot. Then, magdadating tayo sa point na kung saan bibili ka ng robot. Then, for example, me as a budget officer, as an officer in our office who used to perform tasks on computer. So, yung binili kong robot, pwede kong i-program to work my job. Yung robot na yun, binili mo. For example, if you are an accountant, if you are a lawyer, you can buy those robots, then encode those knowledge on that robot, then they will do the job. They will imitate your voice. They will command your idea. Now, they will be the one who will work for you. But you will be the one who will still receive the money, the compensation for the company. I think 
pag dumating yung time na yun, less and less people na yung magiging interesado magtrabaho sa mga malalaking kumpanya. I think we are on the point that we became an entrepreneur of ourselves. We are here to build something, to create something in the world that can create an impact. Our army will be so cheap. Wala na tayong panahon para mag-hire ng tao. What we can automatically hire is the robots to work for us. We no longer need low-level entry jobs that humans would work on to. They can already be worked by robotics. In buying those kind of technology, in buying those kind of robotics in a cheap price, what would be the world would look like? Parang, sige, dito lahat ng mga robot kayo na magtrabaho, kayo na ang magiging government, they will be a good government because they are not interested on greed. They are not interested in building something, building wealth, building expansion like humans would do. Humans on the other hand created those technology to preserve their selfish nature, their wealth accumulative nature. That's how they created this kind of very complex technology in the future. The point of this topic is that in the near future, when robotic technology was so viral, was so rampant in the world, dadating tayo sa point na kung saan yung mga high-end na robot, yung mga mamahaling robot na pwede mong bilihin, konting alteration lang ng software nila, they become the autopilot of our day-to-day boring lives. So, dadating tayo sa point of self-actualization using those technology to leverage our time. The first world country will become the number one fan of this kind of idea. While the third world country may also soon rise, but the less privileged people who cannot afford to buy such kind of robotic technology will, will still rely on their effort on wasting to work but they will earn much higher income in compare to those robots which do not use compensation. So you see the logic here that kung mahirap ka na tao, antayin mo na lang siguro dadating for another 15 years until such time na maka-afford ka na ng robot na gano'n o saan siya na yung magiging magtatrabaho para makita yung needs mo. So we have technology in the food business where in, in the near future everyone can already be catered enough supply of food food will no longer be a problem for humans but what will matter will be how healthy will be the food so take for example yung simple pills lang na ginagawang gamot what if this small kind of drug or pills will supplement our entire body. They will supply our hydration, they will supply our body's needs, our mechanism in the body. In such a small pill, we no longer think about something that food will become a problem in our day-to-day -day living. Humanity can invent something cool, but sooner or later become something boring. You see that during the 1980s, meron tayong camcorder, meron taong dalang headphone, meron siyang dalang CD, meron siyang television, where in fact, everything can only be seen on a smartphone. And dito na lahat, call, text, message, uh, watching movies, watching Netflix, inquiring Google. All of the technology are by newspaper, everything in a simple smartphone. So the food industry will soon look like that. It will become a boring life. Kasi yung mga tao, hindi na nila kailangan pumunta ng mga Jollibee, hindi na nila pumunta ng kumain ng mga restaurant. Mamimiss ng mga future tao na pag tumanda sila. Masyado ng boring ng panahon na ito kasi itong mga kabataan, wala nang gala. Ang eatery, McDonald's, Jollibee will soon die. And that will surely be missed by the people who will still live in the year 2050. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Most 
food industry business will die so it will be replaced by something else that would matter much in, the, in their generation like uh, for example space technology solving global problems future humans will focus more on, on solving their environment than making food to supply these billions of people around the world. McDonald's, Jollibee, KFC, Chow King, they will soon be vanished. So they will be remembered because present humans will surely be missed those times that they still are existing. They still are making an impact and influence in the world. Where in, in the ne near future, food business would only require a pill for a person to live on a day then they will be given this kind of drug where they can consume it for a year that will suit already their basic needs technology will rely mostly on innovation in space industry the future of technology is space sooner or later people will be living on the surface of mars there are actually company now that building something in the future like for example spacex uh, blue origin they are actually privately owned companies that the goal of the corporation is to make people in this earth interplanetary connection of earth and mars despite this kind of innovation business is still an idea for humanity so the goal of the the future business will not more focus on building wealth but focus on building something which they can create an influence in the near future space will become a business tool for humanity nadating tayo sa point na kung saan mag-iisip yung tao na paano sila magkakaroon ng business outside space how 20 year old person create an idea outside the space how they will conduct their economic system and survival outside it's not gan ganun ka talino yung tao kahit saan mo ilagay kahit sabi natin ilalagay mo siya dun sa, sa surface ng mars or sa surface ng moon na pinadala sila ng kumpanya ng spacex pinasakay sila din dun sila tumira gagawa at gagawa ng paraan yung mga tao dun kung paano mabuhay they will still invent technology as much as they can, as soon as they can. That would be sooner or later, 2040. Masasaksiyan natin kung paano nagkaroon ng interplanetary connection yung Earth, yung Moon, and Mars. Imagine, fast forward, nakarating na yung tao dun sa Mars, nakarating na yung tao sa Moon. Which, usually, they say that the ex expense rate would be 200,000. What if in the near future, yung biyahe ng tao, yung travel nila outside space, mura na lang, affordable na lang, diba? Na kung saan, hayaan mo na lang yung mga robot mo na magtrabaho dito, then you and your family will go outside space, enjoy life, enjoy the view, enjoy the experience, enjoy the realization that you are living in this world, in this universe wherein your most valuable asset will be your time and your energy in a step-by-step -step process, dada dadaan pa rin tayo dun sa proseso na kung saan magiging conflict pa din yung isa't isa yung the greed, the selfishness of human like for example, Mars if humans in the 2030 already reached the the surface of Mars, the, they are capable of building community outside Mars. Then humanity will start to make business out of it. They will soon colonize this, this planet, distribute an amount of real estate on Mars. They will be government controlled or private individual, individual na kung sino man yung nakaunang sa, sa lugar na ito. Sila yung magiging first owner, first people who will be entitled to this place what i'm saying is that the government will still own those planet outside and by the time 2040 2050 our population will boom like how colonization process in the europe have conquered the new americans this will be the future of humanity dadating tayo sa point na kung saan makoconcur na natin yung isang lugar in a form of settlement living on those planets yung mga taong hindi kayang mag-afford ng lugar dito sa Earth they will have the chance to afford land outside Earth
government will be offering a lower price for those who will live outside. They are the one who will survive. They are the one who will use Mars as their expansion of their genes. Earth will be so expensive that only the rich individual of the next generation can only afford this planet. Parang force evacuation ito na kung saan inoopera ka ng gobyerno na bumili ng lupa dun sa Mars. Pero in a consequence na dun ka titira sa Mars. Murang lupa but you will be those first people on those Mars who will be remembered in our history. 50 years ahead, wala ka nang masasabing third world country. Every country will be first world. Then it will be called United Earth. Americans will soon expand their colony outside the Mars. They will create an entire country. But Chinese people, China, will also compete on those space race we are talking about in, in our 21st century generation. The printing was actually market during the 2013. I was graduating college back then. But I knew at some point of time, 3D printing will become the most effective tool in the future because it will print everything, including your house, including your food. And sooner or later, it will also print a, a spaceship if you only have the energy to supply the capacity to build a spaceship out of 3D printing. So, in that point of time, who would be interested on money? The humanity will no longer interested on money. They will more likely interested on how they can supply energy, how they can build something that can be an influential in their community. It can benefit mankind. The future of economy would be would rely more on energy efficiency. That will be the the rate of exchange. So you render this kind of business proposal, then the government would give you enough energy to build something out of it. Market would be based on idea. Yung free market natin, yung capitalist world would rely on energy and the idea would be the competitive arena for every people living in that close to 22nd century. Explain already in my first vlog that energy is more important than time. So in the future of society of humanity, energy will be future resources of humanity. Uh, they will still focus on expansion and expanding their genes because that's the goal of, of our genes, to expand our genetic traits across the stars. Sa sobrang rami ng stars sa uh, lawakan natin, May kasabihan na mas marami pa daw yung stars sa kalawakan natin kumpara lang sa butil ng sand na nakikita natin ngayon sa buong Earth. What I meant about the, the goal of humanity would still be expansion is that hindi yan maaalis sa genetic trait ng tao. So, for example, one individual is interested on in, in venturing outside space. So, 200 to 300 years in the near future, one person would own a single planet, a single exoplanet. So, anong gagawin niya dun sa exoplanet na yun? So, parang gagawa sila ng mabilis na spaceship. Then, magbe-venture out siya dun sa uh, isang planeta na yun na binili niya, na bargain niya sa government, binenta sa kanya ng government in exchange of, of energy. So, ang goal ng tao ito parang gusto niya nang bilhin yung property niya, gusto niya nang bilhin yung planeta niya para mag-expand siya ng genes to. Parang yun yung gagawin yung bahay niya para sa mga anak niya, sa mga next generation ng lahi niya. Love will still be a pleasurable thing in humans in the future. Babae, lalaki, magsasama, titira sa isang planeta, doon magpaparami. Go, they go and multiply. They like Adam and Eve's of the future. They will have this small spaceship or this this kind of time warp, time warp machine wherein they can they will travel at a speed of light, crossing different stars, then they reach the exoplanet. So they become the Noah of the future. Yung kwento ni Noah na kung saan pinasakay ni Noah yung mga hayop para mabuhay sa flood. It will become the story of the future wherein a single male and female and 
yung mga ayo extracted their genetic code in a single tube then they are stored in spaceship then pagdating dun sa planeta na yun, they will be planted they will soon expand also they will create an animal kingdom on those on that planet uh, for me it's, it's more like a science fiction but can be real it can be a story where in a man a woman traveling in space for years they brought these different kind of animals different kind of trees the genetic extraction only stored it on a tube na pagdating doon sa space na yon they can replant those genes bubuhayin nila yun through 3D printing bubuhayin nila yung hayop na aso bubuhayin nila yung hayop na ano kasi may na-extract na sila ng genes then magtatanim sila ng puno parang gagawa sila ng sariling earth doon sa property na binili niya in the near future 400 to 500 years humanity will become so old in a way that they already altered their their cells in their body. They, they already altered their genetic system. Kung ikaw yung tao na yung present na tao na bubuhay lang within 80 to 90 years, so the future of humanity, the future of technology will soon make humans an immortal one. Magiging immortal yung mga tao. Maybe in the near future they become cyborg or they preserve their body but they are injected with this kind of stem cell extending their life is a form of money is a form of wealth for humans in the future who can afford those stem cells those evolved stem cells that pag in injection nag edad ka na ng 70 tumanda na yung mukha mo then you will be injected by this kind of stem cell then your aging process will reverse. You become a 20-year-old person again in just a couple of seconds. The cosmetic industry will never be the same again. Take for example yung stem cell. What if they will evolve 50 to 60 years in the future? They become injected in this in our body then we reverse our age. We became young, young again. So, extending our life is important not because we like to enjoy the pleasure of life but because we need it in space we have longer life we can traverse space we can traverse another stars for a thousand years pinakamalapit na star let's take for example Proxima Centauri the distance will be something light years then when you travel at a speed of light you will still need 100,000 years so how can humanity reach the planet in Proxima Centauri when our life would only be living 80 to 90 years tayo dun sa kwento ng Adam and Eve na kung saan bibili ka ng lupa outside into another planet then magtatraverse ka into a thousand light years it is important that you need an immortal body in every 50 years you will be injecting yourself injecting injecting in such time that you reach the place while you're still young you, your your lover will still be young you will be young or another twist is that you will die here on earth but your genes will be extracted na extract yung genes mo yung another clone mo na kung saan siya yung papadala dun sa another planet clone ng pagkatao mo pero ikaw pa rin yun yung utak mo na preserve na dun like na clone niya na while yung body mo dito na naiwan that will be the one who will be decomposed in this earth that would be the one who will monitor what would happen to your another genetic clone that will be living on the planet. It's very science fiction. Make this, for example, exo one planet, another Earth thing like structure. They will plant trees, grow, grow animals, they will breed 10th generation children, anak ng anak ng anak ng anak. Until such time, these two lovers will retire. These two lovers will soon be saying that they are very tired of living on this planet. That can be happen. The future of technology is very complex. It's very unimaginative and very diverse. The grandchildren for the next thousand to two thousand years will remember us. Will remember our time that we used to value money that no longer be needed in the near future. They will be laughing at us. Why we are so obsessed with popularity over solving problems.
oops, why we are so obsessed on money rather than creating well through solving problems. We'll be the one who will discuss this kind of topic. What would you think would be the future of technology? What would you think the future of this comb supply? Ano yung magiging future ng 1 terabyte external drive? It would be soon 50 terabyte, 100 terabyte, an infinite terabyte where we can store different things, different software without much space required. Atoms are unlimited. So you decide now if you will be the one who will view the future of our technology. What would you think would be the best today and tomorrow? What would be the vision of tomorrow? What would be the this young generation would see in the next 50 to 100 years in the future that would realize them how they can make an impact to the next 1,000 years children? How will be the year 3,020 people would think of us? Would they be thanking us for making this complex beginning? Or would the future humans be regret that we live on this planet? They would regret that we exist because they don't think they like us to exist. So what would you think? Thank you. Do you know the name? Kiko Is it too far? That's the one that's there, it's just a little bit of a bush